This is our first fight. No comment on me saying I'm gonna have sex with you. Different energy drink. Yeah, I'm trying to yerba mate today because I feel like um, I may be breaking my, like actually breaking my heart with Red Bull. Um, you know, I've been I've been having some heart pains, some chest pains recently. And I should probably just cut caffeine out of That's my diet. That's what I was gonna say. It's definitely just caffeine. However. Like, how am I supposed to do this fucking podcast without caffeine? Huh, like, actually, people are always like, don't talk to me before my coffee, but I'm not fucking kidding. Don't fucking talk to me before my Girl. coffee. Girl. <laughs> no, literally, though, I've been having, like, crazy fucking chest pains recently. And then you go and sip, like, 80 milligrams of caffeine. You're like, literally, why does my heart feel like in the matter of, like, two minutes it will stop working? Yeah. I've been having palpitations. I've been having... Uh, just incredible chest pains where I literally collapse on the ground in pain and I lay on the floor of the house hoping Josh comes and finds me so I get a little bit of attention but it never fucking happens. You know what's fucked up is like if it was something else that I didn't feel like I could relate to maybe I'd be more worried but because what you're describing is, is literally exactly how like a feeling I know I'm like I know it hurts but we live in pain and we suffer and it's dude it's we it's not something we should ignore though i think it's like very we should both get it looked at because it's literally our hearts like it's our fucking <laughs> chest that's not <laughs> something you should just like be like man it'll fix itself we're too young for heart issues um if i had a heart attack i like to think that like i would trend and that would be like a good thing on twitter for me yeah yeah. Um, no, but I don't have Twitter, so I don't know if I'd trend on Twitter. So maybe I'd get like a lot of reposts on like IG story. Yeah, no, I would definitely be, I'd definitely milk your death like crazy. And like, you have all my permission too. We've I talked honestly, about this before. I honestly don't know how I would react. No, I feel like we're not the kind of people to like grief publicly like that mm -hmm. and intensely, which is kind of annoying because like my lifelong goal is to get like as much attention as possible and the idea that like when i pass my friends won't be like belligerently on the internet talking about me all the time 24 7 is kind of annoying but like kind of beautiful because like i know i'm like you're still loved you're still loved <laughs> i want public love through. like people are like no that's toxic you shouldn't be like possessive and want people to be jealous and like angry over you no i want all of my friends to know that like if they lost me it would be like the greatest whether like greatest i just stopped being lives. their friends or i Sorry, I thought I left the front door open. If we get if a stranger comes in, Ooh, that's good. Whether if it's Josiah thing. or a stranger, um, I don't know how long that cut is or how like weird it was. It <laughs> but if it jumped, it's because we were getting a knock at the door, and I thought it was Josiah, and it actually pissed me off so much because we told him to be quiet, and I was ready to go down there and like be a mean older sister and be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" I told you to shut the hell up when you came here. But it was the mailman, and then this is kind of weird. I got a poster delivered, so it was like, like, like a circular object, and he did like, we did have sex, and we did use it like a dildo, so that was weird. But no, like, no, didn't. Yeah, we did. I no one knows. I was gone for a long time. You were gone for like seven seconds. I'm a quick girl. <laughs> <laughs> it was. That's why they call it a quickie. Yeah, that's it's true. It's because it is quick. Yeah. Um, was it like hot and sweaty? No, actually, because for once we like blasted the AC, so yeah, it's like so actually, it's actually a, just 97. Yeah, it's only 97 degrees in here, which is a good thing. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think we've like lightly touched on it, but like it gets so fucking hot it's like house. it says it's like 85 but no it literally gets up to like 106 especially in my fucking room with all the windows like it's actually like almost unlivable but no I it fully is unbearable especially like i don't know if we just got like the worst couch in the world and the fabric of it like absorbs and like maintains heat but Dude. sitting on our couch is like entering us on like i sit on the couch and i literally pass out from heat and then i wake <laughs> up like 30 minutes later and i'm like literally dripping sweat and there's like a sweat stain on the couch and i'm like like wicking sweat off my face <laughs> onto my shirt and i'm like disoriented and dehydrated and i'm like <gasps> like trying to cry 
draw to the kitchen. Yeah, Dude, yeah, the living room gets so fucking hot. It, like, mm-hmm. maintains humidity. That's what the couch does. Yeah. Do you know what I uh, did when we were cleaning, like, deep cleaning? I, like, moved the couch off the wall, like, moved it forward, like, two feet. And I was like, this looks kind of cute. And you should see it like it when it's like that. And I like, did. I moved everything around it, and it looked pretty nice. It looked like a new space. Refurnishing the house. Yeah, the house down. Boots the house down. Actually, I like. <laughs> I advocate for straight random people to start saying boots, but straight people already use gay lingo, and it sounds funny. But they use it, and they're trying to be serious. Like I like the idea of like someone like kai using it because it sounds funny yeah because him just being like oh whoa that like instead of being like yo that's fire being like oh my god that's boots that girl's boots <laughs> wow that's boots that's boots the house <laughs> like the tiktok of the guy backing up and being like yes giving boots house slay mama like <laughs> i like the idea of all those words being used super monotone mm-hmm. i wish i was a monotone person but every time i speak it's i feel like i sound like a bitch or I'm just annoying. But that's also because I'm insecure. <laughs> and no, I- I'm just monotone. I have, like, very little fluctuation in my voice. Um, and I kind of like it. Like, it's, it. like, it's intriguing. It's like, does he hate me? Or does he like me? <laughs> Mine is like, this bitch fucking hates me and she's a bitch. I have a good radio voice. Like, this, I like sound good. I don't know mic. anyone who speaks on the radio who talks like that. So I don't know why that's like... I, like, have the golden voice. I have the mass singer voice. Literally. Can we talk about the mass singerification of the fucking world? Like, literally, I think, did we talk about we that? We talked about it lightly because we were talking about liking sexy beasts. Oh, okay, because I was going to go into that. Dude, no, that whole shit is so fucking good. Just, like, all, like, shitty TV. Actually, I'm always, like, I don't watch TV, but I watch, like, shitty TV. Like, I will sit, if you put the, like five hours of the bachelor on in front of me i will sit and watch it because like that shit is so interesting i saw someone say like literally putting on drag race and not absorbing any of the information <laughs> and it, like it's just babysitting me with bright colors and funny sounds it's like, like coco melon yeah it's coco melon for adults and like that's the realest shit ever like i i couldn't i couldn't relate more like i don't absorb any of drag race i watch it simply for the loud sounds. That's the a lie, dude. I eat the fuck up out of drag. Dude, it's race. so good. Like season All Star season six is like, it's all right. It's like not the best season, but it's not definitely not the worst season. And there have been some of the best lip syncs of all time um, this season. I wish I like was still into it like that. Like seeing All Stars season two. That's a Magnum. Opus that, yeah, that was Magnum Opus. It's and like, then I it just, sucks because like, like you you didn't start there, but like. That like, was like the second season I watched. Yeah, which is like, it sucks because that's like it. I don't think it'll ever be as good as that. I mean, Bianca's season. Coco Montrese performing on All Star season two is literally like the longest that, run, running fucking inside joke of the friend group. That is like a grailed moment for yeah. us. Like anytime, it's like the single thing I think on this earth that if you put it <laughs> on, it will make us lose our goddamn minds no matter what. That is like in. the hardest try not to laugh challenge in the world is like her like jumping around with her top hat and then knowing that she wanted to perform a Janet song and she <laughs> couldn't, couldn't and then the they rights. gave her that like is so fucked up. It also goes really well with um, It's Oh So Quiet by Bjork. Like that oh, whole scene. Oh really? It's such a big Anybody who has no, like who has never seen that, that is the most like not a, a cutty reference, but it's the most like random reference ever. And there, I bet there's so many people who are like, "What are you talking about?" Literally, and like us gesturing like top hats. It's like I wish I had never seen it, and I like heard someone talk about it because it sounds very interesting. Yeah, it's single-handedly the best moment to happen in Drag Race history. History. I- I'm trying to think of any other, like, um, video or something that's, like, a grailed for the group. I guess the mustard video. Like, the that's mustard. a video that every time we're all together and we put on, it's, like, it's It's, too it's funny. game over. We lose our fucking minds <laughs> over it. Can I, can I admit to one that's, like, one that always makes us laugh that I always DJ on? Which Do you one? know what I'm talking about? Coachella. Oh, bitch, yes, please, please. One of my favorite videos to laugh at, because it will never not be funny, is James Charles. <laughs> Dude, 
There, not enough people talk about the, that collection of videos, but that is actually the best thing, the no. best content he ever made. Dude, uh, that and the one with him singing with the Lopez <laughs> brothers dancing in the background, actually dystopian. Like, no, that that is also that is a person who did all that and then was like in the middle of the Grand Canyon singing. <laughs> like, I mean, James the- Charles like is so effortlessly funny and it's unfair because everything he does makes me laugh. <laughs> no, and it's no what makes it so funny is like it's like very serious. Like he thought him singing in the middle of that canyon was like ethereal. Eating. Like Eating. it was like it was like this is he watched that video back and he was like, "Oh, are you kidding me?" <laughs> like that was everything. <laughs> Dude, if you can right now, literally open up a separate tab and look up James Char- Charles Coachella Beyonce. <laughs> that person, I'm not kidding. That is like the least rhythmically inclined human on this planet. I like, and I stand by that. Yeah, period, point blank, period, everything. It's it's just so, <laughs> like, it's so perfectly imperfect. Like, ev- there's so, so many good, bad things about it. It's like, like, I think I've said this before, but like, I actually enjoy watching bad movies more than good movies because like, you literally don't have to focus on it. You just fucking laugh and make fun of it. Yeah. Like, that's purely what those James Charles dancing videos are for me is it's just like, so bad I can't look It's away. like Coco Melon. Exactly. Coco Melon! It turns off my brain. <laughs> Dude, no, but we've analyzed them. Like, we've <laughs> oh, gone yeah, we've in. gone in. Dude, they're just so like... It, it, it's just a different world. It, that is like a different reality that I will never understand. Yeah. And like, what freaks me out is I'm like, there's plenty of videos of me dancing on the internet. Does anybody like watch them and laugh like that? <laughs> because like, I don't know. I guess the difference is is like, I'm like a sexy hot girl, so I like slay. And like, <laughs> dude. And like, dude, the whole thing is just, it's so fucking funny. That, those videos of him dancing are awesome. And just like the chaps moment, like the coach, the curse of the Coachella chaps. Dude, the curse of Coachella cowboy. Like, like what happened? How dude, did that happen? Th- the curse of Coachella outfits. Why the fuck are y'all treating it like the Met Gala? <laughs> like, <laughs> it literally gets treated like the Met Gala. We've literally, we've had that conversation before where like, um, James Charles like tried to like f- pave his own way in fashion and like tried this whole like I don't even know like what he was going for but it really was just such a big miss like in general dude that um, that whole style or like section of fashion I like don't get and like to each their own but I don't get it I don't get like the buckles and like the weird chaps and like like yeah. weird body like, suits like I, I don't i don't get it Loose like fitting body suits it's literally like prepping to go to war like, I'm like y'all are- <laughs> dude he literally has like buckles all over him prepping for war Who's <laughs> ready to jump out of a fucking plane <laughs> dude i like we've also never been to coachella so i don't know maybe like the day i decide to go to Ch- coachella like something's gonna fucking click in the back of my brain and like a chip is gonna, gonna be gonna inserted and, up. and i'm gonna have to go to melrose the street and like start fucking grabbing <laughs> outfits off of racks but I don't get it. I, I'm like, it's a festival. Like, that yeah. is so uncomfortable. Like, dress comfortably. Yeah. I were... mean, there are some people who do it right where I'm like, oh, bitch, you threw fits. Like, Ricky and Denzel. Like, oh, Ricky and Denzel they, are just like... They throw fits constantly, and I'm jealous of everything yeah. they do. And, but th- that's the difference, though, because they're, like, on top of their shit. Like, mm-hmm. again, not to get into, like, the fashion conversation of who knows what and who gets to wear what whatever i don't give a fuck what anyone wears like do you um i'm just a cunt and i'm a hater and i'll make fun of anything that comes on <laughs> in front of me but like denzel and ricky are just like they just they're learned they yeah, know they're they're like they know they rehearsed it. they don't wait till you know what it is they don't wait till coachella to throw fits mm-hmm. they're always like mm-hmm. caring and catering to like what they wear yeah. i think it's usually the people who like are like I'm crazy. I wear sweatpants everywhere. And then all of a sudden it's like Coachella and they're like, I have to like wear fucking Ariandi Grandi boots to like <laughs> this three day festival. <laughs> and then it's like stomping around in dirt <laughs> with broken heels. It like, like squishing into in. the dirt. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I just don't get it. it. In my head, I'm like, I've been to, I haven't been to a lot of festivals. I think I've been to like two. I've been to Flogna and like three point festival in Miami. And both times I'm like, I literally think I wore like a tank top and dickies because I'm like, I'm going to yeah. be running around. It's going to be hot as fuck. It's going to literally, you're going to be melting like. You're being pushed around. But I guess it's like VIP section. But even that, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I guess are these, the real question is these people aren't like, no one's going to watch 
the concerts. It's like, I'm going to go get fucked up for three days. I'm going to go do IG Molly pics. for three days and, and take IG pictures. <laughs> and and post me dancing on my story. Dude, that, that is I was, just... <laughs> I was so devastated when we didn't go to Coachella, I think in 2018. Because I, re- I so badly wanted to see AFX Twin. Like, that was literally... Also, 2018 was Beyonce, too, I yeah. think. That was, like, just a crazy Coachella. Literally the best Coachella. I don't know. People don't fuck with us. All these people get to go out for free and get their little tickets and stuff. And, like, us, no one gives a fuck about it. I guess y'all don't want to... No company wants to see my Coachella fits. <laughs> no company wants to see me throw on my IMG. Boo-boo IMG-er. man. Boo-boo man. Or boo-hoo man. <laughs> boo-boo <laughs> man. I made a boo-boo in my pants. <laughs> so, boo-hoo man, Fashion Nova man, if you want to sponsor Drew's Coachella Fits for 2022. I'm trying to go. I'm I'd trying wear, to figure it out. I'd wear um, I'd wear some Fashion Nova if I got to go to Coachella for free. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, no, I wouldn't. A Fashion Nova bodysuit? I'd be like, I'm staying home. I guess if it was just like a tank top and something simple, I'd do it. Yeah. But like, I'm not... Dude, again... Again, I just can't certain things like I can't wear because I'm just like kind of funny. Yeah. So it's just, it's like could I see myself wearing like I also just like don't have like the body for a lot of clothing, so like I see it and like I'm like imagine that on me. Yeah. Like that sounds funny. I think um just like I don't know like what the fuck I would wear. Like I don't <laughs> have like a fashion sense really. Like I don't I mean like kinda yeah, I guess me too. Like, I don't... I'm like, what's the... What is the yossification I would pull? All I know is that I want to go to Coachella so fucking bad so I can um, twerk my little ass. Dude, yeah. Listening, like, seeing... Like, I haven't been to, like, a concert that I'm like, oh, I'm... Ex-, like, I go to a lot of concerts, and but it's usually, like, a friend or, like, a yeah. homie, and I'm, like, going, and it's always fun. And it's like, I enjoy their music, but I haven't been to a concert where, like, actually, I got a tickets to a concert in like october so like i'm trying to do that more because i like i'm trying to like buy tickets i want to go see claire i want to see tyler oh but that's God. dude 2022 like i that was my one gri- gripe about like buying tickets for fucking anything mm. when someone goes on tour i'm like i'm buying something that i have to wait six months to go to like are you kidding me what if i'm busy literally <laughs> what if something <laughs> comes up what if i'm dead what if i have to go to coachella and what, what if, if I, have- I got delta alpha covid strain Dude, all of the, like, people who, like, went to all the festivals and got COVID. I'm not kidding. I saw some of those videos of, like, the crowds at, like, Lollapalooza and Rolling Loud. And that part of festivals I can't get. Like, I don't understand, like, standing at the barricade yeah, all day because dude. I would literally freak uh, the fuck out and I'd have it, to go home. It, like, and all the sweaty bodies touching you and just, like... I the, would cry. Dude, I have been in so many concert situations where, like, the the, like, humidity from, like, body sweat like actually starts making me gag like it literally makes me like nauseous the like because then i start thinking like oh like slimy bodies touching my arms and like sweat and like it just like literally like it's humidity made from body sweat and i'm like i i shouldn't be here i need to go to the back so then i like leave the crowd yeah i usually hang in the back of like concerts i've i've been in like the middle of that but yeah i don't last very long because i'm like grossed out by like the touch of other humans that i don't know it's like very (laughs) disgusting to me but also as part of that is like kind of cool yeah like like, jumping around in it like a bit of like a mosh sequence like that's fun because at least you're moving but when it's like stagnant and you're Mm -hmm. like sweaty like oh at vlog now when we saw playboy cardi and we were like jumping around and shit like that's fun but Girl, would we I saw stay Playboy there? Party at Flog. No, like, come on. That's awesome. <laughs> but would I stay there for a full day? No. No. Not a chance. No. Dude, the, I, I, I loved reading about, like, all the uh, Miley Cyrus stands, like, waiting barricade for uh, Miley, but, like, Playboy Cardi came on right before, and, like, obviously, like, Playboy Cardi fans, like, or go fucking, hard yeah. as shit they mosh like it's crazy and all these like girls were getting like trapped in these like mosh pits and like had to get like thrown over the barricade and like all this crazy shit and they were like super pissed they were like why would you put playboy before miley and like all this shit and i was like they're two fucking humongous artists yeah they're like the biggest yeah whatever but i just thought it was funny and i would have <laughs> been the miley stand pissed off <laughs> okay can we talk about how it's like really fucking hard being like a grime stan in 2021 (laughs) dude it's hard being a fan of everyone like and and you can't be a fan of anyone like anyone myself included you you just can't you publicly can't claim anybody anymore like being a lana del rey stan like 
is actually harder than being oh. a Marine. Like, I go to war every single day. With <laughs> I go my to war with mind. my own consciousness yeah, with my every own single day. Mind. Like, yeah, it's just like you, you grow up and then you're like, oh, yeah, you should just keep making music and not talk. <laughs> like, you should definitely. Keep your fucking mouth the shut. The times you should be talking, for the most part, is when you're belting notes. Mm-hmm. Like, let's keep it there. I don't need to hear the thoughts. Get a therapist. Get off of TikTok. <laughs> I, there should be like, there should be uh, me being like, celebrities don't deserve to have I know, like, I was a like, lunch. you're like, let's take celebrity Second Amendment away. And then like people who don't fall with us are like, yeah, stop speaking, <laughs> like please. <laughs> Which I agree with. Um, yeah. I don't think I should be able to speak, but I do it because it's my rebellion. Like, I know you don't want me to do it, and I do it because like that's. That's me being literally. Crazy. Literally, Grimes. She's like, <laughs> I, I want to though. No, literally, she's just like. I think she knows, she knows, I mean, obviously, she knows exactly what she's fucking doing. Everything she says is very calculated, and it's, like, all publicity's good publicity moment. Like, she says the things that she knows will piss people off. I don't think her, like, comments on, like, communism and shit were really thought out. I think she was just, like, saying shit. But, like, at the end of these videos, like, she has, like, Elon Musk in the background saying, like, invest in bitcoin or some like crazy shit like that and it's all just like fucking psyop mind games like playing with people's brains which like it's also like you get to that point and you kind of don't have to care about like what people on the internet think she's literally married to the richest man in the world yeah or second whatever it is second richest man like do you think the hate that she's getting is really affecting her which is insane to get to like i've never understood the idea of like good publicity is all is all publicity is good publicity especially within like influencer worlds i i can't understand like the whole like enjoying getting into a scandal and like making Dude. your whole thing being like a bad person it's always like really confused me and it used to actually make me really fucking angry but now i'm like oh you're you were born in like a different reality yeah. like that, that's how i like understand things i'm like oh freudism you yeah. probably didn't get enough attention as a child so you have to do <laughs> which, you have to which act we out. didn't but like we take we, we know not to be like evil fucking heathens yeah we we troll and we do our little thing but i like to think we're like decent people not to like question anyone's morals because i hate when they do it to me but i don't understand when people's whole thing is like Oh, publicity is good publicity. I like say crazy shit. I'm like, how do you not have the most anxiety? Because I literally care so much about like making sure that like what I say comes across like how I mean it because I fucking hate when I say something and and someone takes it and like is misinterpreting it and it becomes like a big thing. It literally drives me crazy and like to the point of tears because i'm like please like that's not what i meant like I'm i sorry, swear yeah, like I'm sorry. we this like goes back to what we were saying earlier like we should just shut the fuck up like period <laughs> we should just also, shut the hell I up guess, i guess maybe those people are like the people with like smaller egos because they literally don't care what anybody thinks yeah. about that well I, what i was gonna say is no one is i don't think anybody's ready for this conversation and this might be the hottest take of my life but tana mojo is the most based red-pilled person on the internet right now i have to disagree I literally like I don't need to get too into details. I'm, but I was I was joking. <laughs> you're so annoying. I'm, I do not think she knows. We don't have to get into that conversation because this isn't the the we're we're not pulling we, we don't play the same game of tea spill yossification of the world. But One let's just will. say I agree to disagree fully with my whole heart with the actions of a lot of people, and yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Maybe if you caught me in like 2017 before 2018 before what. Yeah, I got therapy in 2018. So if you caught me before therapy and you brought anything to my plate, I would be very ready to give, like, my hot take. Yeah. Um, But then I got a reality check and a therapist. And I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe... Um, I should mind my fucking business and it's it's up. literally the biggest blessing that we waited four years for, to do this podcast because oh, fully the shit we would have said about people or just in general like it would not have been okay like it, yeah, we would fully. have fully like made enemies like people would be attacking us constantly which is like I don't know that goes back to my thing about pride is like I don't believe in being friends with people I don't fuck with like. If I am friends with someone... You can be friendly, though. Yeah, I, I can fully be friendly. Like, yeah. I, I'm not the kind of person that if I, like, met... Can at, you be friendly? You've had moments where you don't like people and you are not friendly in Okay, person. I... I. You know what it is? Is like, 
if I get to know someone a little bit and mm. I see like whether it be like, whether it be like I again I am very like I'm a piece of shit I can't stress this enough I say <laughs> it all the time I'm like a hating bitter bitch and I like understand that and I know that I've gotten very good at not being open about it because I know that it's like an insecurity thing and I project onto other people and yeah. whatever 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 but like at this point in my life if I get to know someone and whether it be like I don't like what they like make or the way they act or whatever whatever if I get to know someone and I'm like, oh, you know what? They're pretty cool. Like, I feel bad. I was like a cut about this person. <laughs> yeah. And I can be chill. Do I have to publicly be homied up? No. 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 But there's I, there's been a lot of which growth. is a fucking even mean. in the last. That's like the meanest thing ever. <laughs> Like, Dude, do I have to public? That's like the most ta- high school shit ever. <laughs> we've talked about this before, but like, imagine dating someone who like is like a creative person and they make the worst shit ever. Like, imagine mating, dating someone and like their music is just like fucking garbage. And Forever Twenty One, fake... the festival. You have to fake. No, I and I couldn't. I like could not. Yeah. I am such a bad fucking liar. Yeah. Like I was talking about this, I think to Lucas. Oh, because for Lucas's thing, he, like, came up to me. I was supposed... Orion was going to show up as a surprise because it was a big thing. And she was, like, not going to come to his, like, birthday party because she was, like, busy moving. And she was like, oh, my God, I I can go. Like, don't tell them because, like, Lucas was sad she wasn't going to show up. Literally, he came up to me. And without thinking twice, he was like, is Orion coming? I go, yeah. And then I went, oh. my God. And I was like... No, no, no. Nard. And then remember when I forgot to feed Orion's cat for literally three days, <laughs> and the normal person would have lied and been like, "Yeah, yeah, I fed him." And I immediately was like, "No, no, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm too good of a liar. Like, I'm." That's I'm how we balance good. each other out. Yeah, like I, I think like I'm not a a good liar, but like growing up, I lied a lot to my parents, and I just got good at it. And I got good at like making like. Oh, dude, it was gnarly. Like, I would, like... You were gaslighting. I was gnarly. Like, I would, like, say some crazy shit. Like, I would admit to, like, the lesser of two evils. Like, I would, like, be, like, blah, 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 and then, like, keep this, like, evil shit that I did on the side. Or, like, I would, um, like, tell the truth about, like, someone, like, an acquaintance and be, like, oh, yeah, they're, like, fucked up while I was the one doing it with <laughs> them, like, type shit. And, like, I, I don't know how I, like... Got away with it. Got away with half the shit I did as a kid. But, dude, I was on fucking demon mode. Dude, um, I, I, like, I could I'm never... a chameleon. Like, I can just, like, turn it on and off. But also, at the same time, like, if I love and respect you, I'm not gonna fucking lie to you. Like, oh, yeah, fully. Like, of course. Like, I'm I, not, I don't lie to people I love. Mine isn't even a flex. I wish I could fucking lie. Like, I want so badly to be able to lie. But, like, I'm just, like, a pussy, and I'm, like, scared, and I'm like, yeah. And, like, I just admit to it before, like, it gets too bad, and I'm like, oh. But... I think a big part of it is also just, like, literally my entire persona online is, like, like... I don't understand how people like follow me like as like a (laughs) a, as a person because like I don't think I've posted a single like real thing online ever in my entire life. You do it in like little ways about like things you like but yeah you're not very personal online. You got like pretty good at it. You got like more personal in the past like year maybe but yeah. Also I just like took a step away from the internet for the like the last year. Yeah. Like I just kind of like I mean, we all did. We kind of just all dropped off the face of the earth for a year there. But I, it it was needed for me, at least. I was going to say, I think, like, even... We just... I, I don't know that we have the, like, the brain to be, like, top-tier influencer anyways. I was anyways. about like, to say, like, I was about to go into that, like, my entire outlook... Or the, the way I view the, like, social media landscape has completely changed in the last year. Like, like it... it it's almost like bad like the way i view it now like i don't know Um, yeah i i like i used to get really like hard on myself and we make jokes about it a lot about like our lack of consistency but i just i don't i don't know that i will ever have like i look at someone like emma and i'm like you are a machine and you are built for this and i'm so fucking jealous yeah i'm so jealous that like you like work your ass off and you like go in and like Still, I think she's someone who, like, openly, like, struggles mentally. And she's, mm-hmm. like, open about that. I'm, like, how the fuck do you have that? And you're still working the way you do? Because you that is insane to me. like, a beast mode. It's, I'm so jealous. I literally have it. zero lust for life to, like, chase like that. Like, I, I'm, like, like I I'm am always, like, why don't I have a $5 million 
dollar home in the hills. And I'm like, <laughs> bitch, what have I been doing? Like, what do I do to what deserve that? What do I do? That? I don't, I don't work at the pace of someone who like would have AC in my apartment. Like, I, I just don't like. That's not the pace I work at. And everybody's always like, how do you get all these things? How do you buy all these things? I don't know. I shouldn't. The, the real answer is I shouldn't. Have yeah, this. I saw that comment. Someone was like, "This isn't supposed to be offensive, but like, how the fuck do they live? Like, they it's not from YouTube. Like, they never post on YouTube. Like, how do they make money to live? By the hair of my chin, it's, literally. Like, I graze by and I have no lust for anything. Yeah. And I'll fake it till I make it or break it. I don't care. Yeah. That, that's then. the real truth. I I just like I think for me I just don't. I, I actually have like trained my brain. I used to like like plan out my future like to a fucking T and now I literally don't give a shit what happens tomorrow. Like now I literally like I I can't think into the future because I will lose my goddamn mind. So like now yeah. I'm kind of just like eh, money comes and goes. Maybe like, that's also like an attention like disorder. I think trait. like object like, permanence. I, yeah, and I, I like can't I'm like I can't plan. Like you dude, I can't stand a motherfucker who's like, use Google calendars. Read this book. <laughs> Write about a habitude. planner. Right. I'm a like, planner. I will slap the fuck out of you. Yeah. What the, like what? You want me to use a, a planner. Yeah, because I'm you bitch, you wanna know what happens to planners? I write in them the day I get them, if I'm lucky. Yeah. And then they sit. And then, like, eight months later, I'm like, I find it. I'm like, ooh, what's in this? And it's, like, one thing. Three like, pages oh, of maybe some shit. I did attempt the uh, bullet journal shit for a little while. Dude, we tried hella hard. Dude, it just, it just uh, like, I don't know. Like, I just forget that things exist. Like, I literally just, like, forget about it. And I, it's, whatever. I was literally just, just talking to a friend about this because two days ago, I... Got home from Lucas's thing and I had a bathing suit on and I was like, I'm going to use this in two days, so I'm going to wash it now. And I, in my head, thought I took it out of the washer and I just walked around for like 30 minutes trying to find it. And I was like, dude, you know what happened is like the thing where I pick something up and I carry it around for like 30 minutes and I drop it and I literally will never see it again. And then it was still in the washer, but I didn't check in the washer because I was like, no, I picked it up. And then I picked up like another thing and lost it in the process. We should right do um, an episode where like we're medicated for our ADHD or ADD. Like we should just like get medicated. Bro, we're just quiet. <laughs> I, know, <literally. laughs> like, I don't it want to. Like, it would be like the worst thing ever. And like that's something I I talked about it briefly on the last episode. We didn't really go into it, but like someone was like, "Why don't you like medicate yourself?" And I was just like, "Dude, like if you've seen me." on like adhd medicine like i literally turn into a zombie like i become like wallpaper like i'm so uninteresting like it's really terrible which it's like a vicious cycle because like online like i have to be like like yes yeah, quirky sporadic. Spra sporadic whatever but like in like balancing like work like actual work like it's like tough because like yeah. I, i'm not medicated my but. manager is like can you please do this one thing and i'm like oh yeah i'll do it right now and literally within an instant i'm like gone for 14 days and then he's <laughs> like you haven't done it and i'm like yeah i did and i didn't <laughs> and i thought i did and i didn't yeah. but like the thing is too like it, it is just like yeah it's a vicious cycle because it's like there have been times where i'm like you know what i have to get so much done today i'm gonna do it like i'm just gonna medicate myself for the day and then like i'll be fucked up because like I don't like that I'm like not as witty and cutty because my brain exactly. isn't moving a million miles an hour. And like literally a very specific incident I think of is I was like working in my room and like medicated and actually getting shit done. And Josh came in and said something to me. And I'm not kidding. The fact that I had to like dig deep in my brain to find a witty response and then it took too long and it wasn't good. It like destroyed me. And I was yeah. like, no, I'd, I'd rather literally never get anything done. And that's like exactly i'd rather be myself <laughs> which is like not Dude, okay okay it's like what if i lose my spark <laughs> the what spark if I'm a functioning human the spark in question <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> the spark. spark in question yeah the no maybe we need to lose studio. it um no uh not enough people are talking about uh josh's short film minimum max because like he like i'm i'm not saying that as a joke like he literally like made a short film about this exact topic i know literally when he was like fucking 14 and it actually is like fucking good like yeah. i watched it and like tear up at it because i was like oh my god that was like me as a kid like it's if how only, I, felt. I wonder if i would still be okay <laughs> Okay, I'm. Su I was supposed to be a doctor. I don't. I've said that a <laughs> few times online. Like I was supposed to be a fucking doctor, and now I'm here. I was always supposed to. be Imagine a if I was medicated. I would be a doctor. If I was medicated, I would. 
I don't know what the fuck I'd be doing. I'd be like an orthopedic I surgeon. I never ever Plastic once surgeon. in my life thought like I should do something that like bases on academics. Like I never once in my life, never yeah. once in my life. I guess I wanted to be like a journalist or like a writer in general. But even that, that was just me being fucking annoying. And I'm like, I want people to listen to me still. Like that, like that's still very an, a narcissistic thing. And yeah. like it is creative based. But like I was like, I want people to like listen to me. Like everything I've ever wanted <laughs> Hear to my do. Thoughts. And literally everything I've ever wanted to do in my life had to do with getting attention. Hear I wanted to be a model, attention. Thoughts. I wanted to be a gymnast, I could do flips, attention. I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a fashion designer for like three minutes. Again, attention, wear my clothes. Um I wanted to be a radio head. A radio host, listen to me. I'm a doing disc that now. Jockey. I want to be a journalist. Listen to me. Like it was just all like, listen, look, listen, look. Mine was like, oh, I like animals. I'm gonna be a biologist. Oh, I like water animals. I'm gonna be a marine biologist. Oh, I want to be rich when I'm older. Mm. I'm gonna be a doctor. Um, oh, but I want to like also help people love themselves because I hate my fucking body. I'm gonna be a plastic surgeon. That was like my um, thing. And then also I like fucked up my knee at a really young age. And I think that was very pivotal for like my career path. Cause I was like, oh, like I loved my doctor. I was like, I want to do that. And I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon for a long time, but then I switched over. And then I was like pre-med for a little bit. And I, I can't believe people it. like have doctors. Like just in general. Like when you go fill something out, it's like your doctor. I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah my doctor dude my heart doctor ghosted me i just realized <laughs> my heart doctor just fucking ghosted me again i i hate this shit i hate doctors <laughs> i love doctors like that's a lie but like anybody practicing to be a doctor and i was like stop don't say that if you're no practicing, one is listening i was gonna to say actually if you're practicing if you're in med school and this is what you're listening to i'm not trusting get help you. like you i'm don't. not go i'm not going to you <laughs> like i don't trust you dude there was a funny ass TikTok that i was like no, because you need to go to old ass doctors because these motherfuckers are copying my homework. Literally, <laughs> like, they're they're googling the answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. Oh my god, doctors, old doctors didn't grow up with Google. That's something but old I doctors realized are today. Like, also evil. The Everyone's evil. internet was invented in the nineties. Like, well, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, it should. It was invented like in the fifties or like in the forties. Like when you said that, I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Because in just my head, it's it, the complete opposite. It feels like I mean, it literally for me has been here forever for your whole life for my entire life. So I'm just like, it's been around <laughs> forever. I don't know. My brain was just like fucking blown away that it was invented like just in the nineties, and like look how far it's come. And now it's like an in actual head, cesspool of hate. Has- the internet has literally only been around since like 2010. 2012, maybe. Oh That's my god, what the if the internet is just like a Harvard um, social experiment. experiment and they're just going to shut it down and be like, yeah, we wanted to see the human condition. Like, I'm always like, virtually. that would be awesome, but then I would have no job and I, like, what? Uh, that what am I going to go? Awesome. <laughs> what did I say the other day? What am I going to be a fucking coal miner in the communes? <laughs> like, no, like, I'm going to be a com- comedian in the communes. I'm going to be a fucking jester. <laughs> I'm gonna get stoned. <laughs> Not everybody can be clowns in the commune, but we will. We will. No, why did you say that? You were like, oh, you were like, if everything, if so, if like everything collapses, like. I think we were talking I about like EMPs or something. I don't remember what I said I was gonna be. Like, I'm not gonna be fucking making bracelets. <laughs> Like I'm gonna, I'm. They're gonna put me in the fucking coal mines, <laughs> and I'm literally gonna get black lung. They're gonna make me go have a kid. They're like, go have a kid. I'm like, what's the worst thing someone could say to me? Even though what two episodes ago I was just being like, oh, I'll do it. Yeah. I'm bored. Um. Life is boring. Do what you want. Do what you want. Live what you want, your what you want life. I mean, this episode's gone pretty smooth. We haven't had. We didn't even come up with topics, and I'm pretty like, we've like just been. That's what happens when you have an attention issue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we were going to talk about our Zillow addiction and how mm. we love looking at houses that we'll never have. Yeah, so I anywhere I fucking go, like no matter where it is, like the first thing I'm doing is looking up the real estate market <laughs> in that town and then like whatever house I'm at, I look up the real estate on that. I'm so fucking nosy about Josiah people's Josiah does that. Josiah is a fucking freak. If he he'll be like, "What's the address?" and he'll go on Zillow and look around. Yeah, and no. Like, so he can know the format of the house. No, I'm we this, go in it. I I'm so nosy about people's financials. Like, like I I met 
this person and like the first thing like i don't care like why is everyone so like like don't talk about money like <laughs> bitch no we need to talk more about money i need to know how much money you're making and I, I compare myself to you i i don't ask about how much money people are making but i'll ask like really invasive questions which uh, in my head i'm like they're not invasive i don't give a fuck if someone knows how much i pay in rent like i don't care yeah but, but like i will go into someone's house and be like this is invasive but how much money do you spend to live here like yeah. i always ask that Same. shit and, like, if someone has a nice car, I'm like, how much money did you spend on that? Yeah, every time. Every fucking time, I'm like, what's your monthly payments? And it's just, like, I don't know. I just... I, I always get an answer. Yeah, I get an answer <laughs> every time. And that's the thing. And no one's ever uncomfortable by it. But why, why did we create this stigma around asking people about their financials? I don't get it. I never will get it. It's because our parents... Our parents... Uh, like, every... <laughs> the generation before us, they're the boomers, baby whatever but zillow addiction the first thing i'm doing i'm looking up how much this house costs and how much the real estate around it costs and if i could afford any of these houses never can i afford a house <laughs> <laughs> never once I, I, i've said this i think i said this in like an episode already but like i just don't understand the concept of owning anything like yeah. owning little things i get but like i don't like understand big things i'm like why i'm like why do i need it yeah Dude, I, I forgot what I, I think I was talking with my dad about this. This is like the whitest shit you'll ever fucking hear. I was like, we were like, like the billionaires are buying all the homes. They're making it a renter's based economy. And my dad was like, that's not a bad thing. Like, like, and I was like, I want to own a home though. And he was like, I mean, it's probably more expensive to own a home now than to just rent one for the rest of your life. And I was like, maybe. I, I, I like, don't know what the comparison of that would even mean. Like, I don't understand. I'm like, I, I'm like, would it be cheaper to spend, even if I got like, say if an apartment was like a thousand dollars a month, which is like in what fucking world, yeah. but like a decent human sized apartment being a thousand dollars. But even if that was, I was like, okay, spending like $12,000 a year for like 80 years. I guess that is cheaper than like buying a home. Yeah. In some markets. But, like, literally, that is, like, the craziest hypothetical ever because you cannot live anywhere for $1,000 yeah. for the most part. Not even, in like... That's $800,000. you are you are asking me to do that math? Are you serious right now? I'm oh. dumb as fuck. I took my SAT and I didn't even know you needed to bring a calculator. This was in 12th grade and I couldn't do long division. I can't do long division. Don't ask me to do long division. Yeah, I'm, like, I, I don't even remember the, the like, little the bracket carrying. thing. I don't know what goes anywhere. Like, mm -mm. what does that mean? No. I, I actually... When I first moved to LA, like, that was something I wanted to test. Like, me and Christian just sat down and we were just, like, trying to do, like, long division together. And, like, I could do it then. But then, like, recently I tried it. And, like, it just, like, left my brain. I was just, like, like, it, it kind of freaked me out, too. I was, like, I don't know how to do, like, simple, like, even simple division. Like, no, say. Like, like, whatever. I mean, I can, like, do some mental math or whatever but like writing it down on paper like the fucking tree stems and whatever like i don't get it it doesn't make sense to me anymore. math has like never really made sense to me i was really good at some for some reason at geometry i was really good at geometry and then past that i was like oh i don't know i'm yeah. not doing this but also like miami dade like schools like you didn't have to actually know how to do anything and you could just like graduate and yeah. that's how i graduated it's, i was just like <laughs> i was good at reading and writing and like weirdly enough history but that's because i like i've said this before i had like history a favoritism i have a favoritism for like really fucking cunty like evil teachers and they always like me too because we're both like based in like bitterness and hatred so i was like that in in my history class also actually what were we watching oh we were watching david cho's show yesterday mm -hmm. who this was such a good question who was like the first person to believe in you like to like mm. look at you and like see something in you because I literally probably you really yeah like no like i swear to god like legitimately like all the internet shit i was doing up until like i met like you or christian like everyone was like you're fucking weird you're whack like cool like you have half a million people following you on the internet like those people aren't real those are just numbers and then like we just turned it into something way bigger like oh that's sweet yeah well who's the first like adult do you think though my mom yeah your mom 100 percent. my mom is literally my biggest yeah fan. i know like it's she so sweet. she like watches every podcast on apple on spotify and on youtube like six times like she's Dude, like i need so to get the 18 awesome. i need to get the 18 streams in i think the first like adult my dad like 
obviously always like knew I was like smart and like well-rounded and I think he always like believed I would do something but like culturally he didn't he's just like a he's like a guy from fucking Honduras like he doesn't understand like the internet and stuff and Mm -hmm. I think like with a lot of like older parents like of course they're like what does that mean like it's very traditional like go to college and shit but the first adult to believe in me and like whoever like really listened to me and like what I was saying and thought I was like an intelligent person was my English teacher oh, yeah. from high school. Like you talk I was thinking about, about that like them a lot. He literally changed my life. That's and fucking... I've told him that a million times. But like it always blows my mind how like some people don't realize like how important it is to fucking listen to a teenager. Yeah. And like literally, yeah, just like to tell them they're doing okay or like even just like to let them know like, oh, you are like chill as fuck like you have a different you have, you think of, you see things different yeah and it was like so important for me that like i remember i would like get in a lot of trouble in school for in reading and writing classes because i didn't believe in like and i still don't i think it's fucking stupid but i guess i get it like on like a school basis so that like everyone's following a certain set of rules and it's like maybe easier to grade i don't know whatever but i didn't i fucking hated doing a draft of a paper and doing like it has to be five paragraphs and it has to be like this. And I would always get in trouble with English teachers because I wouldn't do that. And like on like, we had FCAT, like that was our like yearly thing. And I would always make it everything that I didn't have like some weird resolution paragraph. If anything, I would always pick a topic that there was no like resolution to. And I would write about it so that at the end I could be like, there is no resolution to this. Mm -hmm. And like, I would never conclude things. I would always just write it exactly how I wanted it. And somehow I always passed, but like my teachers would get really mad at me. And then like, he was the first teacher who was like, that is so awesome. And like, he was just really nice about it. And then like, I remember I obviously as a teacher, especially as like an English teacher, I feel like he, any teacher is like, go to college. And I remember once he told me like in my senior year, he was like, you have fully changed my like mind on like the idea of like what people decide to do with their life. Like, whether it be like education or like career wise that's fucking awesome and like we we, he was just always so like nice to me and when i would be like i'm not going to college from like freshman year when i was like i don't think i'm gonna go to college like i I can't do like school it doesn't work for me he was like always open to it and like open to a conversation with me meanwhile i had teachers who would literally bully the fuck out of me (laughs) for not wanting to go to college but like yeah it's just so crazy how like Adults really don't, I think it's hard for them to understand that, like, the things they say to kids, even out of anger, or, like, trying to, like, guard them, like, you have to be careful, yeah, because, you're damaging. like, you're doing a lot of damage, and then when you're doing good, you're, like, you have no idea how good how you're doing. How helpful like, you're doing. Yeah, I think, like, um, they, I forget her name, but I had a vice principal who, like, um, we had, like, a very, like, tumultuous relationship. Like, she, like, was always getting on to me, like, and, like, like anytime I would post shit on the internet during school, like, she would be pissed. Like, all, all my internet shit, like, during school, she was always so, like, anti it. But, yeah. like, I think she knew, like, deep down that, like, I was doing what I wanted to do. So she kind of, like, fucking respected it. And I think she was, like, kind of, like, the only person, like, in my school system who, like, really understood, like what i was like doing on the internet and like creatively like oh like this is like different like yeah maybe we should hone this in even though she like was an absolute bitch to me all the time but i think she like realized and i think now she even knows even more which is like super cool but like your english teacher was like my bitchy vice principal and yeah she was super chill but very sweet to think about literally one time she like called me oh my fucking god i'm just gonna tell this story but like one time a long time ago I like made a fucking video of me like uh like I, I had like a toaster and I like walked into my mom's bedroom and I was like I'm gonna shove this toaster up my ass or some like crazy shit like that like just like uh, like absurdist comedy just like trying to get a reaction that's all I did on like the internet was just like trying to get reactions out of people I'd say the most crazy shit um so I I posted that and the next day <laughs> she this my vice principal like called me to the back office with like like a bunch of my tweets like i'm gonna shove a turkey up my ass like tweeted out like all of them (laughs) printed out and like stuck on like this paper and like like pages like flipping through those like giant like notepad things yeah and like she would like 
read off my tweets to me and like it was like probably the worst feeling I've yeah, ever had in my entire life. It was just like 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 just like complete embarrassment like like uh, I don't know. I I, I I did a shitty job at telling this story, but like basically long story short, like she got to like the I'm gonna shove a turkey up my ass tweet and she was like she read that out loud and I was like <laughs> I was like please fucking stop. Like please stop now. Like I understand what you're getting at. Like I will tone it down on the internet bitch no i fucking didn't i i like literally on the way out of the office to like history class in the hallway i tweeted some crazy shit like just like yeah about the situation um she was like you're representing the school in a wrong way and i was like bitch like i'm the coolest motherfucker in this school like what do you mean like i'm representing it in a cool way bitch like (laughs) i'm fucking awesome dude i remember in ninth grade I don't think I ever spoke about this publicly, actually. I got suspended in ninth grade for a Vine. And it was a Vine. It's so whack. It's like just stupid little kid shit. I was literally like 14. And I was like, went to the bathroom and I was like, bathroom shenanigans. And it's literally me (laughs) ripping paper out and throwing it on the floor and tossing a roll of toilet paper into the toilet, like a Uh. full roll. Which... My fucking principal didn't believe me, but I was like, I took it out. There was like an empty like roll in there and I just like went and yanked it out and put it on the side, which is still fucked up because a janitor had to like touch yeah. that. But like, I, I was like, I didn't clog the bathroom. Like the, and the next day the toilet was fine. Like I didn't fuck up the toilet. Um, but basically I was sitting in my French class, um, which I was failing miserably, but whatever. That's besides the point. I was sitting in class and the principal came up and, or the vice principal, I think it was a vice principal. I fucking hated him. Um, and I hope he has like a hemorrhoid or something really annoying right now because I fucking hate him. But he um, came and he was I'm like... I'm going to eat that hemorrhoid like a jelly bean. I just want to bite it off. I love biting hemorrhoids. You know what I'm talking about when you get the hemis. They're little jelly beans around the, the edge and you just like pull them off like... Bite them with your front teeth. Bloody. Bloody hemorrhoids. No, keep going. The hemorrhoid. <laughs> like, you were going to keep going. I'm just not going to say anything. Um, but basically, I got pulled out of French class, and they were like, come down to the office. And I was like, what the fuck did I do? I go down to the office, and they have my fucking Vine playing on the computer. And I was no. like, I was like, oh, my God. And I think someone at the school snitched on me, because I was like... I was like, you motherfuckers don't know about Vine because people oh, at my school didn't like care about Vine. And then I, I heard through the grapevine that someone had snitched on me. So one of the like motherfuckers who like Losers. were one of those nerd ass motherfuckers who worked in the office. Loser. I was like, bitch, fuck you. You're a hater. Um, but yeah, I got suspended for a week and that's actually how my dad found out about my Vine account. Yikes. And that was a nightmare because I was like on there screaming about Niall Horan being shirtless and <laughs> being a <laughs> <laughs> Like a fucking thornberry. <laughs> Dude, literally, that reminded me of probably the most trouble I had gotten in in my entire life was from my Twitter account. So I oh, had like, I I, yeah, I had a reef tank, like a coral reef. Like I had a bunch of beautiful coral, a bunch of like really expensive fish. Like I, it was like my pride and joy. And they obviously with that, like you have to like test the water chemistry. So like I had this like set of like chemicals that like um, you like get samples of water and you put it in there and it legitimately looks like like breaking bad vibes, breaking bad vibes. Like it looks gnarly. It looks like I'm making meth with this fucking kit. So like obviously my like young ass fucking 15 year old yeah. brain is like oh like i'm gonna make a banger tweet so i take <laughs> a picture of it and i post it on my twitter account and i'm like cooking meth bringing some to school tomorrow who wants it and like <laughs> like just like the most psycho shit and sure enough um i know who fucking snitch on me i'm not gonna say their name and i'm sure they're fucking listening to this because they were like my biggest f- hater fan and they yeah. they're they're a grown ass fucking man bitch i fucking hate you and i hope your house burns down with your family inside um <laughs> what is wrong no he ruined my life i was literally mean to that lady the other day for no reason in the car and i was like she honked at me and you were like because you scared her and i was like yeah i fucking scared her because she has two more days to live fuck that bitch and i said like the meanest thing ever <laughs> dude literally no so basically 
I tweeted that. Um, I went to school the next day. And again, I was greeted with my vice principal with that tweet. And uh, like I got pulled out of class and I was fucking like handcuffed and they were like searching all my shit, like the craziest stuff. Like they were like, where's the meth that you brought to school? And like, it was obviously all like to scare the shit out yeah. of me. Like I, they knew I didn't fucking cook meth and bring it to school. Yeah, like, but of course, it, like as a kid, you're fucking terrified. Exactly. Like, no. I was freaking the fuck out. And before this, they called my dad and my dad was fucking livid. He was like, are you kidding me? He, they called my dad and he was like, Drew's like uh, cooking meth, like blah, blah, blah. We're going to come by the house and like search y'all's house with a warrant. And my dad was like, okay. So like I went home and was greeted like I, my, I was like handcuffed, for whatever. Long story, it was just crazy, the craziest shit. Um, I came home and my parents like legitimately like were so angry with me. And my dad told me they were like, they're gonna come by and search the house. Like, so if you have anything upstairs, go and flush it. And like, of course, like I was an angsty fucking teenager. I had drugs upstairs in my bedroom, so I grabbed all of my like really expensive designer drugs and <laughs> flushed them down the toilet. And they never fucking searched that. They never came by and searched the house. And I'm, I guarantee that was just a fucking ploy for my dad to get me to flush all my bad shit. That he yeah, just totally. knew, like, like they know he, he, whatever that fucking song is, like, um, she knows. Yeah, she, she knows. knows. Yeah, yeah, like you were just mixing. She knows with, oh no. Yeah, oh, no. literally. <laughs> she literally. no 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 no. Um, but yeah, then they they told me they're like, well, like we have like anytime we see your car and we can just pull you over and like search your car is that true i no it's not fucking true like <laughs> literally they just were lying to me and i mean i had a very recognizable car i had like a, a silver car with black wheels like you yeah. could see my car and i believed it so for like the longest time i was like never riding dirty like maybe i'll get into that like high school shenanigans like all the bad shit i did in high school which maybe will literally like, be like such a fun episode to hear about your life and then when it's my turn i'm like oh, no, no, no. yeah, yeah literally, literally do it I'll, I'll talk about like my experiment experimentation with illicit substances and whatnot one day but and we could talk about how i literally was like a part of the dare program until i was like 17 <laughs> like, <laughs> you were literally a spy and I, didn't even, I, I was such a snitch and i didn't believe in smoking <laughs> weed and i was like y'all are fucking crazy y'all are losing your fucking minds um actually w one more thing because i think we're hitting our hour mm -hmm. i want to close it off the wor the most bad thing i did as a teenager actually was a hit and run. Every oh time I say hit and run, God. people think I, I mean like I hit a human and ran. Girl, you but, still did a hit and run. That's like still yeah, just I know, as but bad. I, I just wanted to say that because I feel like if I'm just like, oh, my hit and run, people are going to be like, yeah, bitch, you killed someone. Like, but no, it was like, a, okay. Basically, we, me and my brother were like the ones who always got sent out to do laundry at the laundromat. So mm -hmm. like we would be at the laundromat and like the laundromat we would go to was really close to a starbucks and by this time i would have like 20 bucks on me to spend so i'm like this was like maybe like 11th grade and we were doing laundry and we had the car and things still had to dry so i was like um i told dante i was like i want to go get starbucks and he was like you should ask dad and i was like why do we have to ask dad like we we asked dad for everything like this like it's not like i'm doing something bad i just want i literally want a strawberry or sour refresher like leave me alone <laughs> Um, Let me get my Starbies. I literally think I was going to get like a fucking like green tea lemonade. Like mm. that used to be my fucking shit in high school. But I was like, I'm just going to go. It's going to be quick. So Dante scared us fuck in the car. Actually, I think we finished the laundry. Yeah. I think we finished. He was like, wait till we finish at least. I was like, okay. So we finished the laundry. We put it all in the car and like we go to Starbucks. And then like the Starbucks is on a corner and where there's like a two... I don't know how to explain this without like visuals, but basically the Starbucks is on the right side. We're like at this intersection and I have to make a left, but then get into the plaza that's on the uh, right. And there was two turning no. left lanes and I was all the way in the left turning lane. And this was like a big street. Like if you live in Miami, like Biscayne Boulevard is like basically a highway. It's like four Shibuya lanes. Shibuya crossing. Okay. It's a big street. <laughs> It's a big street. It's the only <laughs> other big street I know. I came from shit ass nowhere in Texas. Population 7,000. <laughs> Basically. We had one lane roads. <laughs> I know, that freaks me out. <laughs> There's really nobody there. 
Um, I, I'm in the left lane and I don't know, obviously now as an adult, if I was in the left lane and I had to get all the way to the right in an instant, I would just go down the street, make a U-turn and like figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I turn left you're a and child I try, without a license yeah i'm oh i also have no license and i'm 15 in this story. yeah you like, didn't you didn't t say that like you're unlicensed you should not be driving you're yeah. behind the wheel i like learned to drive like a year ago like and <laughs> illegally like i i should not be driving and i'm in like a big ass suburban like yeah. i shouldn't be driving Beast let alone car. like a three road car uh, yeah. car so a boat I'm driving the boat and I get in the left lane and I'm Let like, Fuck, I have to, I have to get to the plaza. I have to get to the plaza. We're gonna pass Starbucks, and I just try to merge three lanes over, and someone was in my blind spot, and I just smacked the fuck out of this car, pushed it onto the sidewalk, and immediately. <laughs> I like Bruh. look and the guy gets out of his car and I see his frown. I'm like, no. And I just <laughs> slam the gas, do like a very loud U-turn into this other lane. He literally, it's a big ass lane and I'm at a red light and he literally like just walks and takes a picture of the driver's license of the, <laughs> of the plate and I still drive away because I'm so scared because I'm not supposed to be driving. My dad's gonna fucking freak out. Like I'm just freaking out. Dante's in the passenger seat also while all this is happening and he is freaking the fuck out and i'm like doing 70 down this like street that mm -hmm. i shouldn't be going like 30 down and then i just pull over like a mile away and dante's like freaking out i'm like oh my god oh my god and i get out and i check and because we i was driving a fucking tank although the guy's Zero. car was all fucked up my car like the car i was driving didn't look that fucked up and my mom like would always get into fender bender so the bumper was kind of fucked up anyway and i was like you can't tell i did anything and i was like and don't you fucking tell anyone to dante <laughs> and he was like like they're gonna know and i'm like they're not gonna know don't fucking say anything Kept your cool. and we got home i feel like everything was chill I'm girl you said you're not a good liar um this was like the one time i lied and like <laughs> got away with it but i got caught and like i was about to say yeah because so I like got home, I feel like everything was okay, Dante's freaked out and I go in the room and he's still freaking out having like a full panic attack and I'm like, you need to shut the fuck up because you're gonna look, like, they're gonna know. And then I just like act like everything's fine. I had finished my drink before we got there. I rid of the evidence because I'm smart in that way. Um, and then it, it's like a nice day out. It's like raining and like the car is parked and my parents are sitting on the front porch and I hear my, my mom and she's like looking at the car and she's just like, what is the car looks weird and then my dad looks at it and he's like did you get into into an accident and she's like no i i haven't oh god and then they're like talking about it and she's like maybe someone backed into me at work or something. yeah someone definitely backed into you at work and i was like mm -hmm. out like in the like front room like of the house like listening through the porch i remember i just walked away and i was like ah! and then i thought i got away with it and three days later my dad gets home from work and I open the door for him. And the first thing he says is like, did you crash the fucking car? And I just start sobbing. I'm like, yes. And I like ran away and I got so scared. And then I just had to call the insurance and be like, yes, I stole the car. I'm a delinquent child. <laughs> and then it was fine. That's crazy, um, dude. And yeah, and that's like the only accident I've ever been in. I was about to say, I've, I've never, ever, ever once been in an act car accident in my life. I've like been Wait, in Wait, have an, I been I've in been one? in an accident, but like I haven't gotten into an accident. The, the only time I've ever been in like a car accident, I had, we, I was like probably like 12 and we just went to um, Quick Trip and gotten Slurpees and you know the slurpy straws at quick trip are like 14 fucking feet long like the world's <laughs> biggest straws for absolutely no fucking reason and like we're drinking our slurpees in the back seat and my friend's dad gets in a fender bender and we like are all sli slipping our slurpees and like i deep throat this fucking slurpy <laughs> straw and it like yeah whatever we all deep throat our slurpy, sl slurpy straws i would actually take the car a lot as a kid which my dad doesn't know but like when him and my mom would go out on weekends at night, like I was notoriously always taking the car because we also lived really close to McDonald's mm -hmm. and I would take the car to McDonald's, get an iced co caramel coffee from McDonald's and then go home and listen in to Right Hand by Drake in the shower. Was, Again, 2016 vibes. I freaked the fuck out by driving. I still am. I'm like a very... Er, 
I've gotten used to driving, but like before I drove, I didn't drive the car once. Like one time, Drew uh, drove us down a one way. No, that was <laughs> that was wrong in every sense of the word. That, I I did that the other day. I feel like yeah, I don't know, but that was that was the scariest moment of my life. Yeah, and then I had to get out of the car and like uh, take. The I've road. never feared for my life. Like I've never had a moment where I'm like I'm about to fucking die. Other than that dream I had. The only time I thought I was gonna die was when I almost got hit by a car, and I think I spoke about that when I was in New York and I almost got hit by a car. Like I've never been like like survival mode. That's something I need to experience once in my life, girl. I talk about this all the time. I'm gonna disappear. You're and you'll so never like, ever see me. Drew's again. always like, I'm gonna run away. I'm gonna dis. I'm gonna disappear, and y'all aren't gonna know where I go, bitch. One, I have your location, and I don't think you're smart enough. To I'm gonna leave my phone. You're it's going to be so a big game annoying. of hide and go seek. The day Drew disappears and y'all start posting missing posters, I'm not fucking reposting it because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not giving him what he wants. Like, that's what he wants. I don't know what God I God forbid you get abducted because I'm going to be so fucking annoyed. I'm going to be like, no, you're not. Like, you're pissing me off. I'm going to, I'm going to pinky promise you right now. Right now. Look. Pinky what, promise No, me. what is the pinky no, promise? No, put your, lock put, your pinkies. I'm not locking my pinkies in to something please, I don't please, know. Please, no. please. That's like signing a contract. Oh my God. I, I swear to God, I'm not going to disappear. I'm not just going to randomly disappear. I swear on my life. So if I do get abducted, please look for me. <laughs> I'm begging you. Like, please. I guess, yeah. You're fucking rings. Damn. What? You would just cut the shit out You're of me. You're jealous of... I'm icy. I'm icy. Lit. Icy. Bicy. Wifey wanna be me. Dude, you know what's the most annoying thing ever? My AC unit in my room turns on via my Siri. And I'll be like, hey, Siri, like, turn on the AC. And she'll think I say, hey, Siri, turn on icy. And icy <laughs> by Saweetie starts playing at six in the morning and I literally want to end the my fuck life. Out. And I freak out and I'm like, and I'm like, hey, Siri, stop. And I just like yell. <laughs> hey, Siri, shut the fuck up. Um, and yeah, and that was the episode. And That's all y'all get. Y'all get media now. That's it. No, no media today. No media. <laughs> you snooze, you fucking lose. Um, here is the media. Um, the movie everyone should watch, especially if you are a woman in your younger 20s, because this is such a good coming of age film or not even younger 20s, just in your 20s. If you're like a grown ass woman, sometimes it feels like all the coming of age shit is like for 17 year olds. And it's like, mm -hmm. bitch, I'm coming of age right now. Like I, I'm still figuring my shit out. Francis Ha is such a good fucking movie. The monologue that is rid is like red in that is like so fucking good it's beautiful made me cry um my like audio media of the week is hmm nobby by peggy goo Ooh. escape by dj kuro nico i cannot say anyone in the world's name and these chains by mid-air thief <laughs> Yes! Yassify. Yassify the world. Mid air thief slave fight. Um, okay, my song is Dreams of Nostalgia by Lion's Milk. If you want to like, if, I don't know how to describe this song. It's, it's genuinely, it's such a weird feeling. It gives you such a weird feeling when you listen to it. Like, it's a good weird feeling though. Like, yeah. it, it feels weird, but good. Um, I've been listening to that recently. Um... Jamila by Monsieur Brown is just like bleeps and bloops. This it's like the most repetitive song ever. It's literally like the same like beep 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 over and over again. But I don't know why I'm so obsessed with fucking bleeps and bloops sounds. Like they're good to just like it's it's kind of like uh it's like it's, patterns it's like I think. Like the melanification yeah. of your brain. It's like you can turn your brain off and just be like stimulated. Yeah. And like it's nice. I I just love that style of music. And then not enough people are talking about fucking Birdman. Um, the movie Birdman. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is that the one with... I'm thinking of Lawnmower. Like, yeah, yeah. You're thinking of Lawnmower Man, yeah. which is also something you should watch. But that's the media for next week. We'll go into that later. But Birdman, fucking perfect. Still one is. of the best movies of all time. Um, it's just like a one-shot movie about like this like play happening. I don't fucking know how to describe it. It's good. Go watch it if you haven't watched it. And watch it again if you have because it's just really fantastic. Um, and then we should start a little book club. No. Yeah, fuck you. Um, fuck I'm, you. I'm about to start reading Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the book adaptation. Um, so if you want to read that with me. Do Stop that. reading. No more reading. And that's the episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. Go take that poop. My brain has been That you've been off. holding. This whole time. No more.
No more brain. I refuse to use brain power ever again. I don't think we need to use our brains. Yes. Bye. Bye.